So I'm not sure how many of you know me here, but uh, I've been around for quite a bit. And uh, in fact, I was in the very first tea camp in Malaysia. I was one of the speakers there as well. So it sort of dates me. Um, but I think there are a few other people who was here as well for the first geek camp. And the first geek camp in Singapore, I hosted it when I was uh, running the NAU team in Yahoo. So uh, the geek camp and I actually have quite a bit of history. Uh, I think this is either the third or the fourth time I spoke at the geek camp. And um, there was one time I spoke at geek camp in uh, uh, Microsoft Singapore as well. And it's a completely set up. So it's kind of like uh, yeah, a bit uh, nostalgic as well for me. Uh, <clears throat> so, this is kind of a fun talk for me. Uh, I've been doing quite a bit of other types of talks uh, throughout this whole year. And I just thought to close out the year with something that's a bit more fun. So please don't take this too seriously. Okay? It's not meant to be too serious. Uh, don't ask me too deep questions either, because I might not be able to answer it. Um, I actually picked up Python to do this talk. Right? So for any of you, uh, people who do Python on a regular basis. Um, if you find any flaws, please don't throw anything at me. You can come talk to me later. Uh, if you miss me like, hey, it's okay, it's a bit long, it's cool. Um, so let me start. So um, the, the idea for this talk came when I was, um, I mean, I, I, I've been in a couple of uh, startups, and uh, I do get startup founders coming to me and asking me sort of things like, you know, how do you actually hire uh, people? and uh, you know, what are the other things that you, you need to do as a startup and so on. And I thought, when I want to do a talk, maybe I'll say, maybe there's an algorithm for that. And that, that thing sort of got stuck in my mind for a while. And so finally, I so dug up a couple of algorithms and I tried to uh, see how I can fit it. If it seems a little bit too forced, forgive me again, I say this is a, it's a, supposed to be a fun talk. Uh, so let me start. Um, algorithm for startup founders. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm using um, Jupyter Notebook here. So it's entirely text and code. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you're trying for me, but uh, I guess it might not be. Um, Jupyter Notebook is entirely text and some charts uh, and code. So no pictures, unfortunately. Uh, I think you can add to them, but uh, I thought maybe that's kind of what it is. Anyway, let me start on the first topic. How do you hire the best engineers? I know the words are kind of small. It's not meant to be entirely read here during the conference. So I will show you the uh, GitHub uh, repo at the end of the, the slides. You can download it and you can run all the code as well. Uh, you can you do it at leisure. So anyway, the uh, one most very frequent question that people ask me is, how do you actually hire the best engineers? And uh, really, it is a very complicated thing to do. Uh, but there are things that uh, to look out for. I won't actually elaborate them today because it's not the purpose of the talk. Um, I wanted to talk about one possible algorithm that can be used to uh, sort of model this particular problem. It's a famous problem in mathematics. It's called a secretary problem. Um, it also has a number of other names throughout the years. I think this problem has been around for about 100 years or so, I think. Um, one very popular name for it is called the 37% rule, and you'll get to know why in the short while. Um, so this is the problem. Basically, you have a pool of candidates that you want to hire, that uh, you want to hire uh, for a secretary. In, in this case, a software engineer. There's only one position. And of course, if you're a startup founder, you don't have that many resources and funds, you just want to hire the best, right? Uh, you can interview the candidates one at a time. And after each interview, you can rank them. And after ranking them uh, and doing the interview, you must decide whether you hire him or not. Because if you don't, then the, uh, the candidate will be hired by uh, somebody else, right? So how do you actually make the decision to hire or not hire? And when should you make the decision? There is a solution, of course. Um, and uh, the solution is you need to hire the, the best engineer after X number of years. When I say solution, I'm saying it's not really about the solution about you as a startup founder hiring people, per se. It's a solution to the secondary problem. Um, so you hire, you interview X number of uh, engineers, and after that number, you uh, look out for the best engineer that you can find. Right. So let's say you uh, you interview ten people, and then after that, on eleven person onwards, you uh, the best person that you find to hire the person. So that's that's a solution to the 
uh, map to, to this to this problem, secretary goal. But what is this magical number X? Okay. So in this um, talk, I'm going to go through a Monte Carlo simulation and try to figure this out. And so this is the, uh, again, like I said, you're not supposed to read all of these, right? Um, uh, basically, the uh, simulation is quite simple. Um, you go through here, I go through a thousand iterations, and the number of applications are 100. You go through iterate. Uh, you notice something that I'm actually using uh, a while loop. So when I, this is the first thing I did one in Python, right? And uh, I look in Python and say, okay, how do I loop? <laughs> then I look through some literature and said, there is no for loop. What? <laughs> <laughs> so you can see here I do a while loop. So before anybody can say anything, yes, later I discovered there was a for loop. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I actually use it in the code later, but anyway, at least for this, this code, I need to go back and, and change it, sorry. Uh, for some of us, I can even listen to this before I didn't have time to make it change it. So let me run the simulation. And uh, of course, the 37% rule, it says it all, right? Um, the answer is really 1 over E, where E is the oldest number. Uh, it's a mathematical constant. And uh, the number is 1 over 2.71828, which is around 37 percent So let's see, let's see how this looks like. So if I run this and um, I chart it out, you can see. Um, from here, this graph, right? There is an optimal point here where it has this point, and this number is around the seven. Okay, it's uh, so this is simulation. So every time you run this, uh, a slightly different number will have come out. But the number is about uh, thirty-six point something, or thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight. Okay. So again, what is this magical number? So you, let's say you got hundred applicants, you interview the first. 37, 38 people, and then the subsequent ones that you interview, the best candidate that you can find, which is better than the first 37, you hire that person. And you have the best probability of hiring the best candidate out of the 400. Okay? It's been mathematically proven if you want to know the mathematics, there's always Wikipedia or mathematics book. But uh, instead of going through some, um, mathematical books, basically I just want to color to try to see the whole thing. Okay, so this is a very popular question for me. Um, another, oh yeah, so uh, high probability, high risk, and so on. So another um, issue many founders sort of uh, encounter uh, that you have to deal with is that really, which problem do you want to deal with first? As a startup founder, I'm quite sure um, you face with a number of problems on a daily basis, right? And all of them are important, all of them are critical. So which one do you actually focus on first? And are there any algorithms to help you to figure this out? So the answer is maybe. So let's go through the simulations. Uh, so this problem is really a single machine scheduling problem, right? The single machine being you as the startup founder. Right? Uh, you want to, there are a number of tasks and uh, you want to deal with them. Uh, and we want to figure out what's the best algorithm to deal with them. So basically, there are uh, a number of parameters that you need to deal with. The first is the level of importance, the weight, uh, the duration, how long it takes for you to do the task, and the last is the due date. When do you actually need to, how urgently do you need to complete this task? With? Okay. So the answer to this, is, um, the solution to this is really what's really important to you. Um, so ideally, in a, in in the ideal world, you have all the time to deal with all of these things, one at a time. So uh, you can complete this task and you're fine and so on. But in reality, I think not just in startups, but in, in many cases, you don't really have enough time to deal with all the tasks that you need to do. Uh, so you need to figure out what's the best way of doing this. Right? So you want to maximize on what's important to you. But what does it really want to you? Is it you want to complete the maximum number of tasks possible within this time frame? Do you want to solve the biggest problems first? Or do you want to minimize the lateness? Or do you want to reduce the amount of uh, each task being late? So you've got to figure out and think about which is important to you. So again, we will do Monte Carlo simulation. Um, this simulation is, is relatively simple because the tasks are going to be totally independent from each other. There is actually no linkage to this side. Whereas in real life, a lot of tasks are dependent. Right? They are not really uh, independent of each other. But anyway, this is a simulation. I say the, the code is available, and uh, you can take my code, but the, the idea is really to encourage you guys to, 
try to, to write the whole code here. So my take on this, we create random task, and then I have the properties of weight, duration, uh, and due date. The due date here, I uh, did a little bit of tweak here because I want to randomly generate due dates. Otherwise, all the due dates are going to be upfront and it's going to skew the whole thing and it's not going to be as realistic. Uh, so this is the, uh, the function to create it. Or look in a <laughs> Are there a lot of Python instances here, by the way? Anyone in the Python? Not as many, I thought. I thought it would be a lot more. Maybe just try it. Yes. <laughs> okay, um, next function, you just want to tally up the three main metrics you want to measure. The percentage of computer tasks <coughs> over all tasks. Basically, figuring out how many times you can change something. Uh, the second is uh, the weights. The, how many of the important weights you have? Uh, uh, what's the weights of the the weights that we have computed, and the last is the lateness of the completed task. Uh, the lateness being the amount of the, the duration that we spent minus the due date. So that's the uh, lateness, and I tally up all the uh, lateness together to form a number. Okay, so that's the code. So let's talk about algorithms now. Um, we always have a benchmark algorithm. Uh, the, the benchmark algorithm would be well, no algorithm. Right? In other words, at uh, given a, a set of say ten tasks, I basically flip a coin or roll a die. Someone was telling me, um, and just choose a task at random, and pick a task and just execute it. Right. So there's basically no algorithm. I just pick one task at random. But of course, there are other algorithms, and these algorithms then focus on the take areas that I wanted to do. The first, we I want to do the faster task first. Then a uh, second, I want to do the important task first, and a third, I want to do the task that is easier. Okay, so these are the algorithms, flip a coin, faster task first. Uh, this is important task first. They are actually about the same, actually. Um, the only difference is how I sort the task. Uh, and do the task first. So let's just run through and see what happens. Uh, I assume that the time, the duration that you have is about three quarters of the total time that you, you would have if you have to complete all the tasks, right? So it's 0.75. Um, and you run through this over 1,000 iterations. Remember this multi color, so it's unpredictable. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's random. <coughs> okay, so um, 1,000 iterations, 0.75. I, I use 1,000, but you can really use 10,000, 100,000, whatever. Just that 100,000 runs for a really long time. Uh, and then I, <coughs> I create a task. And then see, follow me. I'm trying to find the trigger as well. Um, and then I try. Okay, so for the first one, um, I want to see the tasks that are completed within the timeline. So definitely the more, uh, the better. Uh, if you look at all the algorithms, if you are, I'm looking at, say, which task, uh, which algorithm allows me to complete the more tasks, right? Obviously, faster task first, works best first. That allows me to complete the most tasks. Right? So that's logical, that's intuitive. So here it is. Let's look at the next one. Um, which algorithm delivers the most weight? So which algorithm allows me to do the, the, the or complete the most important task first? So again, very intuitive. The important task first will give me uh, the best. But interestingly, faster task first actually do quite well as well. Right? So that's a little bit of insight here. Um, and the third is, like, how do I minimize the lateness? Okay, how, how do I uh, ensure that I'm not as late? Uh, and for this, the less is better. Okay, uh, so the structure bar is better. So you look here, the algorithm due task first performs the best. Again, interestingly, faster task first actually works second best. Right? So again, a little bit more insight. But the other two actually don't work too well. So that's the three basic algorithms plus uh, no algorithm. Um, but what happens if you consider that I want to do things as many as possible, and I want to do the important things first? So go to a little bit slightly more complicated algorithm. Basically, I, I divide the weight by the duration. Here, right? I divide the weight by the duration, and I solve it, and let's see how it comes. Right, so um, 
I'm not sure how small and big it is because I can't really see this. I only see what's on the TV here. Um, the top one is the latest algorithm, and then the, the three other, other four other algorithms uh, here. So in terms of the number of tasks completed, it doesn't really do too well. But uh, this doesn't do the best, but it's actually the second best, right? Um, the task weight delivered is um, pretty, pretty good, actually. So it almost has, it's actually slightly better than all the task work. So that's, that's pretty good. But in terms of task lateness, it doesn't do too well. So intuitive, quite intuitive again, uh, if you place importance on the tasks that are important and uh, tasks that can be completed faster, then you can complete more tasks that are important. Right, so that's intuitive. How about due times? Okay, so again, instead of dividing by duration, I divide by the due date. And uh, oops, it's not supposed to come out. But anyway, um, that's that's the code because I don't want to show too much of that. Um, and look at the latest algorithm here, the top one. Um, number of tasks completed is not that many. Right? In fact, it's quite like the rest. Um, the amount, the weight delivered is third best among this. Okay, not too bad. And the lateness means, means that the amount of lateness is the second best. Right? So again, it's, it's pretty good. So far, no big surprises, so I think that's, that's pretty good. Um, of course, these are all simple algorithms, right? These are all simple algorithms. And um, the point about this is not really to go through like uh, completing one on one. Right, or Python 101, although it is Python 101 for me. The uh, idea is here, you can actually simulate some of these things, and you can actually create even more complicated algorithms. Right? So I created a few very simple algorithms. What are the other algorithms can you create, and how can you simulate this, uh, this particular experiment? So that's, that's uh, the second problem. Um, the third problem that um, a lot of startup founders do encounter is, like, should I continue what I'm doing? Should I persevere, should I stick to what I, I'm doing? Or should I pivot, or should I go to do something else? Because maybe it's not working out, or maybe there's something else better that I should be doing. Right? So this, there is no, again, it's, it's very circumstantial. Uh, there is no best answer to this. But there is a common problem in probability theory called the multi unbedded that can give us some insight. So I'm going to talk about multi unbedded but um, the disclaimer here is this particular problem is a pretty big problem. It's quite widely researched. There are a lot of research papers on this. Uh, what I'm trying to give is just a flavor of the uh, potential algorithms. Um, so it might seem a little bit simplistic. If you are really interested in this, there's actually a whole kind of literature that you can go through. Anyway, so what is this problem? <coughs> um, as in many probability, probability problems, it all starts at casino, right? So probability theory, I'm not sure, it's actually started with people gambling. Right? Uh, and this is no different. We talk about one arm bandits, which is the slot machine. Uh, so you, the idea is here, you have a gambler facing a row of slot machines. Okay? And at every round, you must decide which slot machine should I pull. And the, of course, at the end of the day, I want to earn the most money. right? So what is the best algorithm for me to decide uh, which arm to pull at every round, at every game, such that I earn the most money, right? So, uh, in a way, it sort of mirrors, like, as a startup founder, you want to gain the most success, right? Should every round, every few months, every uh, quarter, every half a year, should I pivot? Should I stick to what I'm doing, right? Um, same thing with the gambler, I pull this machine three times, nothing. Should I pivot, go to another machine, or should I persevere? You know, the fourth time lucky, the fifth time lucky, the sixth time lucky, whatever, right? So the, 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 there is a sort of a similarity in the problem. So the simulation is a little bit more involved now. Um, what we'll do is we create a number of arms, uh, slot machines, and each with a probability distribution. Each arm is a list of integers, with either one or zero. One representing that the success is a win, and zero representing a loss. So uh, we'll use this simulation, we we'll run through a number of iterations, and then we we'll determine how successful each one of these algorithms is. Okay, so creating arms uh, using a particular probability. So 
how do you actually consider the person to have won at the end of the day? Uh, you can consider a winner. So you must have some criteria for winning, right? Because otherwise, how do you determine um, whether you win or not? So there's, of, co of course, the very obvious one is, if let's say I have 100 arms, the one with the largest number of wins is the winner. If you choose that one, then you have won. Well, of course, if I choose that, most of the algorithms will fail, right? Because, you know, the number of arms, if I have a large number of arms, then the probability is very low. Uh, so I lose 75%, right? So if I actually um, wins that are larger than 75% of the, the arms, then I will consider myself to Okay, so that's the algorithm. And let's look at algorithms now. What's the benchmark? So again, you look at the simplest, it's just no algorithm, right? Or the, the basic algorithm is persevere, the persevere algorithm, or stick with one. Okay, I got hundred arms. I choose one at random. Okay, I think this is it for the rest of the day. I'm just going to pull this one until I I, uh, I run out of money or I win big and I, right? So that's the stick with one. Very simple. Um, flip here is basically a, a random, and uh, I just sum up all the number of ones and hey, that's the winning number. If they win or they not. Another algorithm is um, every turn, I will randomly choose one. Okay, I will not persevere at all. I will just, every turn I'll choose something different. Right, so it's a flip of coin again. For example, algorithm. So these are the two benchmarks, right? One or the other. And now, let's take, okay. 1,000 iterations, 20 arm, 50 games each round. Okay, so uh, for the arms, when I randomly generate the arms, I use a normal distribution. And the uh, reason why I use that, I'll talk about that in a short while. So this is the uh, simulation. I get the results. And the left, left, right? The blue chart, okay, I don't know what's left, what's right. Uh, the blue chart represents the number of weights, okay? Uh, it's zero to, to one. So you see something like um, 0.8, basically is 80% of the arms are, 80% uh, of the arms are with, okay? So out of 10 pulls, you get eight weeks. So that's basically what it is. And uh, the one to 20 represents the 20 arms, okay? So the probability of winning for stick to one seems a little bit higher than flip a coin. Um, could be true, mm, not quite sure. I think I basically run too few iterations to me. But anyway, that's what it is uh, on the simulation. So, seems pretty okay. Let's make some changes to this, okay? Um, in the lingo for multi-arm bandit, there's something called explore and something called exploit. And uh, basically, it fits into persevere and um, persevere or pivot, right? So, um, ex explore means that you are pivoting. You are trying out different things, okay? And um, uh, exploit means that you are uh, persevering. You have decided this is the best for you and you stick on to it for the rest of the rest of whatever it is, okay? Flip a coin is a pure exploit algorithm because you keep exploring. And every round, you will try something different. And stick to one is a pure exploit algorithm because you have already decided you're made up of mind, this is the best one and this one I'm gonna go with. Okay, so what happens if you mix these two together? Which means you explore a little bit, and then you decide the best arm, and then you exploit. Okay, so in um, this, which I call look before you eat, um, I, I try to make it a bit foxy, but uh, actually a name for it, it's got the epsilon V algorithm. Um, you spend a epsilon amount of time exploring, and then the rest of the time exploiting. Okay, that's simulated with E equals 0 to 1, or 10% of the game. Okay, so this algorithm, it's a bit long, but uh, essentially you look here, the first part of it, you are exploring. And then after that you calculate and try to figure out, try to figure out which is the best arm here. Right, the, the algorithm I used to figure out which is the best arm, uh, is actually a pretty simple one. Basically I take the number of wins that he has done, he has gotten so far, divided by the amount of times you actually pulled for that particular uh, arm, okay? And uh, once I figure out which is the best, and there could be multiple of best, if there's multiple best, I just flip a coin and just random choose one. Once I've done that, um, I will export for the rest of the game. Okay. 
Okay, I'll just continue uh, using the same R. Let's look at answers and uh, the simulation. So, if you look at it, um, you look before you live, uh, it doesn't seem such a great algorithm. Not such a good idea. It doesn't seem like a good idea to look before you live, right? So, let's rush in front of the traffic every time. Forget about it, the leap of faith. So, why is looking for the uh, leap of bad strategy? This is non intuitive. But you must remember that's, that's a function of a number of things. First, is the strategy is actually simply normalizing the number of things over the number of things. And the second thing is the distribution of probabilities in the arms. You see the variance within the arms are uh, actually very low. Uh, I know it's kind of hard to see this, but you see people go okay, so at one point. Okay. Uh, okay. Oops. Okay, sorry. Uh, Okay, so I'm using the probability function 0 0.05. Okay. Oops. Uh, wait. Uh, 0.05. So the rate is actually pretty slow, uh, pretty low. Go back to the reason. What happens if you make the variance larger? Okay, so I change it now this time around to 0.15. Right. Let's take a look. Okay, it's not too bad. Uh, flip of coins is pretty good. Oh, sorry, uh, one of the coins is pretty good. It's slightly better than just sticking with one. Uh, flip of coins is like a pretty bad idea now. Right? So you look here now, the variance um, between the, the arms is really big. Whereas previously, uh, the variance is, is not like it's not big. Right. So, but why should I look at it before I leave? Because sticking one is almost as good, right? So let's, let's take a look at something else. Uh, how about if only a few arms are not likely more to be green than all the others? Because if you look here again, um, there are actually a number of arms that are pretty close to each other, they're pretty close to the, the best, right? But what happens if I use that, like if I say that there's only a few that are very few, that are more likely? So to generate this large array, I used another probability distribution. I use the Pareto distribution, also known as the power law, to uh, properly known as the power law distribution. And this is it. So instead of uh, using the normal distribution, I use the Pareto distribution. With alpha is uh, 0.95. And look okay, here, but it seems like uh, look before you leave is significantly better. Right? And of course, it's actually quite well. So if it's a power law, then Randomly flipping is good, so yeah, because randomly flipping you have a pretty good chance of winning. One of them is very high, right? Uh, as you just take the one, the probability of winning is probably low. So <coughs> sort of intuitive. So what's my conclusion? So actually, there's no conclusion. It's a simulation. <laughs> <laughs> the simulation, right? So I'm sorry we feel cheated, okay? Uh, but that's not the point. My point is not really about what's the best strategy because you know what? After so many years of research, no research has really found like this is the best strategy yet. Okay. What I'm trying to say here, what I'm trying to achieve throughout the, okay, the entire talk is um, programming is fun. Okay. Uh, you should do your own simulation. Yeah. Feel free to modify the algorithm, feel free to play around with the parameters and try to figure out, you know, and play around and try to understand uh, some of these things. Uh, it's, it's really fun. Um, I have a notebook here, it's uh, github.com slash founders. Uh, it's just the notebook actually, and then uh, everything is here. You can run it. Um, I use 1,000 iterations just to make the simulation faster, but you can try 10,000, 100,000. Sometimes the value might be or it might be more consistent. Because I think if you use a lower number of iterations, uh, if you run it over different times, it actually varies quite a bit. So, you know, that's the end of my talk. Uh, and I think I will spend out time for one minute. So, Take questions. Yes, Roland. The so the pivotal persevere problem is a more generalized form of the problem where the secretary algorithm is appropriate. Did you consider, and did you decide not to, use the secretary algorithm to tackle the pivotal persevere scenario? Uh, to be honest, I didn't really put too much thought to it. Um, make a it is a uh, fun. Yeah. Uh, I just wondering if there's been a delay. Yeah. 
So the answer is really too, too much about it, and I was actually learning Python along the way. So uh, I'll just play around with it. <coughs> Yeah, uh, was, as far as I remember, like uh, the sample, when you say 30% of the first problem, usually it's not percentage based, it's actually like fixed. You can sort of work out the 90% the percentile based. Uh, uh, sorry. Is the problem like that you're trying to define as the best person, or is it like 95 percentile, making sure that the candidate you select is good in some percentile? Or? No, so the. Uh I mean, this is this is actually mathematically proven, right? There's yeah. some some mathematics behind this. I don't think it's very complex mathematics, but there is some mathematics behind it. Um, basically, given a fixed pool of candidates, let's say 100, and it's fixed because if it's not fixed, then this doesn't work. If it's a fixed pool of candidates, okay. if you um, interview the first 37, let's say 100, you interview the first 37, and then subsequently, as you hire. The best, the first best candidate that you find that's better than the first 37, that has the highest probability of being the best candidate, the best, I'm not the best, not the percentile, not the best among the rest. But of course, that high probability doesn't mean that it's high probability. <laughs> it doesn't mean 90% you get the best. There is a probability. Yeah, it's just one of those slides. Uh, okay, I think I ran out of time. So, thank you.